Hello, my name is Casey Crowick. I'm with Stratage Corporation. I'm going to go through a presentation on packages and you take a die attach that Stratage developed for high power GAN devices. Before we get into the details of our revolutionary process and packages that we developed for Gallium Nitride, I want to give you a little bit of background on Stratage. We were founded in San Diego in 1992. We formally became Stratage in 92. Uh, the roots of the company actually go back to a startup that was founded in the mid-80s and with a focus on building high reliability ceramic packages for ga uh, gas devices. We've always had a focus on packaging and assembly of compound semiconductors. Uh, we're still located in San Diego County, although we're a little bit further out in a suburb of San Diego called Santee. We're an ISO 9001-2015 certified facility. We specialize in packages for high frequency, very high power, gallium arsenide and gallium nitride devices. The markets that we've been in, involved with since the beginning include space and military. Um, we're, our, our packages are orbiting the earth in various constellations, some of which we might recognize, some others that are, uh, have military classification or are military classified that we don't even know what they do. Um, we're happy to say that we are on the, the latest Mars rover, the Perseverance. Um, and this is the fourth, fourth Mars rover that the uh, strategy package is on, as well as the orbiters that are relaying those messages you know, to and from Earth. We're, we're in many um, radar applications, including um, the electron electronic warfare and countermeasures. Uh, millions of our packages are in uh, the long-haul internet infrastructure or 2.5 and 10 gig BPS applications. And we're in many, many terrestrial radios operating at various, various frequencies with probably our largest commercial success um, in that we're, we're used to package many VSAT chips for transmitting uh, KU band signals. Um, and to the right, we have a S parameter measurements of, of one of those uh, packages that was built specifically for DSAT. A couple of years ago, we, we had the um, objective, based upon you know, our customer's request, uh, to develop packaging and assembly operation that would reduce uh, the chip junction temperature for high power GAN devices. Uh, we used a two pronged approach to um, improve. The, um, the packaging allow our customers to, to really utilize the, the GAN technology. Um, that two-prong approach involved a revolutionary gold eutectic dye attach method that we engage in our assembly area, and it's also involved creating uh, thermally enhanced packages with extremely flat dye attach surfaces. You know, at Stratage, we, we have two um, main types of packages that we manufacture. Um, one would be packages that are made from hardened ceramic. So this is opposed to co-fired ceramic. We uh, procure hardened ceramic that has laser cut features in it. Uh, at Stratage, we metalize it and fire it at very high temperatures. Many of the designs have continuous um, traces from, you know, from the chip to the outside. Uh, with gold, so you have a very good conductor. And um, most, of our, most of our packages, the dielectric that, that is involved is, uh, is alumina, 96% alumina. For, um, for hot chips that need to be sitting on a dielectric material, we also make packages made from beryllia oxide. The second style of package that we manufacture at Stratage are what we call molded ceramic packages. Um, these engage a uh, we have a rather old technology, glass to metal um, technology, where uh, glass is used to, to connect uh, iron, nickel, cobalt leads and bases and rings um, with the dielectric material. Uh, ours is a little bit different in that the, the glass is alumina filled and it makes it more crack resistant. And these packages um, are great for high reliability hermetic applications where you need true fine and gross leak hermeticity. Those styles of packages can be manufactured with um, or are manufactured with uh, copper composite or uh, copper laminate materials. I'll tell you more about that. Um, I'm highlighting certain, certain aspects of a uh, material set and, and processes 
uh, for those that are particularly uh, pertinent to the, the packages that we designed specifically for, for gallium nitride. So our core processes include um, the laser machining of, again, post-fired ceramic. Uh, there's advantages to that that I can tell you about here in a moment. Um, the firing of thick film conductors, you know, generally uh, we're, we're talking about tungsten or molymanganese for factory metallization. Uh, we're, we're skilled at um, copper-silver uh, attachment of, of the bases to the metallized ceramic, as well as gold germanium for at slow, slightly um, lower temperatures. Um, mold of ceramic and glass to metal seals are something we've been doing for, for close to 30 years. And almost all of our packages uh, have electrolytic nickel with soft gold overplate, which is really good for both wire bonding and also for soldering. So, you know, going back to the roots of the, of the, of the company, um, we, we chose certain processes um, based upon our ability to make packages with the, 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 the very best performance. And, um, and one example of that is, is why, why do we use post-fired ceramic as opposed to co-fired ceramic? Well, one of the advantages there is that we can laser cut um, cavities, cavities in the packages that are very close to the, to the outer dimensions of the chip, um, especially where your RF in and out are, you want to have a very short gap. Um, and with laser cut features, you have a very tight tolerance on, on the size of that cavity. And by, by making it just a little bit larger than your die, that allows you to have a, a very short wire bond. Um, and for high frequency applications, having short wire bonds, having low short wire bonds is much better for performance. As I mentioned, uh, many of our transitions were designed with, uh, with gold um, from inside to out, which is super low loss. And, and because so many compounds in the conductors uh, have, are very high power, um, our packages are designed to, to accommodate thermally conductive bases uh, that have CTEs matched to the chip. So these are very robust packages that provide lower chip to package junction temperatures. Also, we can attach uh, the bases to the, the ceramic ring frames, the dielectric material uh, without a braised fillet flowing into the cavity. And one, if you have a fillet, it, it prevents you from bringing the, the edge of the, the die, especially on the, on the side with an RF launch, uh, very close to the cavity wall. Um, but without a fillet, you get a good uh, connection both you know, thermally and electrically underneath the chip and without, and, and also, and, and are able to uh, minimize that distance. So once again, you know, your wire bonds can be very short. So we, we started out as, as purely a, a company that made um, strip line filters and different types of filters, as well as, uh, you know, these, of course, packages for, for you know, gallium arsenide. Um, and in the late, late 90s, we, um, we developed an assembly line, you know, to, you know fine-tuned for high frequency, assembly of high-frequency devices. So we could be a one-stop shop for customers, you know, with bare dye or, or um, with, you know, or, who, who needed you know, high performance packages. You know, we certainly learned that you know, with, with many uh, high frequency chips, uh, you know, the customer wants the coupling caps and uh, 50 ohm lines in there to, uh, to improve the performance of the assembly. Um, and again, the 50 ohm lines are something we manufacture in house uh, that allows us to keep the wire bonds very short. We've been using you know, conductive, non conductive epoxies as well as gold tin, you know, since since the, the, the assembly line was put in back in the, back in the late 90s. You know, we currently have a class 1000 clean room with class 100 work areas. Our emphasis has always been on the assembly of compound semiconductors. So we have you know, gold wedge bonding and, and ribbon bonding, um, which, is, which is conducive for shorter wire bonds. Um, we know that you know, many compound semiconductors have sensitive circuitry on top, and, and so we, we know that um, you know, you can't, you can't have, have, have you know, no surface contact uh, mechanisms for, for picking and placing the chips. Um, and, and having been an assembly house, we, we understand how um, making packages that are easy to assemble is important, not only for our customers, but also for us. So beginning, you know, the beginning, actually, you know, 
a few decades ago, many of our uh, gas customers were, were you know, beginning to develop cans. And, and they came to us and, said, and, and asked for you know, packages that could be you know, used to package their, their, new, their new technology GAN devices. And we began with you know, putting, putting the packages or putting the chips into you know, standard packages that were developed for, for the Marcinide mainly. Um, but we, we learned over time that um, uh, a, a package built with a, a copper laminate base uh, provided certain advantages for, for GAN. Mainly that the, the GAN device could be sit could be sitting on a, a pure layer of copper, which, as you know, has a has a very uh, high thermal conductivity. But copper has a has a very large uh, coefficient of thermal expansion, which would cause you know any, anything other than the smallest GAN chips to to break um, during during heating and cooling. So the the copper laminate bases that we employ have a core of molybdenum that help match the CTE to the to the GAN device. And then beginning maybe about you know eight years ago, um, we, we started working on uh, a technique for attaching the die that would minimize um, the ball and line thickness of, of the gold tin solder joint. And we and we you know we chose you know chose gold tin solder because it's been around forever. It's a very mature technology. You don't have to worry about things like outgassing. And you can use gold tin solder along with a, a, a gold tin sealing method that will allow uh, you to have a fully you know, hermetic but fine and gross leak package that can be used in, in all sorts of applications, especially high reliability applications. So this is an example of one of our LL series of packages. These, these are ones that were you know, developed, we began developing many years ago for GAN devices. It has what, what's, what's called a CMC laminate base. So that's copper, molybdenum copper, and a, uh, a ratio of uh, one to three to one. So let's say we have a, a 10 mil thick um, base. You're gonna have two mils of copper, six mils thick of molybdenum, and then two mils of copper. And then this is your little ceramic ring frame. In this case, it's probably a FET package with very wide leads. And um, this, is, this is all brazed together. Um, using either Q-Sil or, uh, or gold germanium braze. And these are all, by the way, these are all packages that have been developed for, uh, for GAN devices. So here's another exploded view of, of the assembly. This, this is, this is the, the, the die, and this is the gold tin preform that we have um, selected for that die based upon its uh, outer dimensions. Our idea is to have just enough gold tin so that you get full coverage with, without having excess. And uh, we're, we're for, you know, for, for each device, we're going to have a special fit collet that is going to scrub that device. And while the package is being heated from underneath, it's going to cause that gold tin to spread very uniformly. Um, and the scrubbing technique, we're able to get a very, very thin bond line thickness. And again, the uh, CTE of the, of the one to three to one uh, CMC material is very well matched to the, the gallium nitride. So here are some examples. Um, so, so we purchase uh, CMC bases from, from suppliers around the world. Um, that's not unusual, um, but we do do some post-production or I say post-purchasing uh, processing of those bases to, to get to the, the bottoms and, and the, uh, the die attach areas of the packages is as flat and smooth as possible. And as I mentioned, we were able to um, attach our alumina ring frames with almost no braze going into the center of the, uh, the package. These are, these are typical um, you know, 96 percent alumina ring frames that have been brazed to CMC bases. And this is an example of a, a molded ceramic package that was built with basically an opening in the bottom because the, these rings are made out of uh, iron nickel cobalt. Um, and it, 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 you know, after, after the package is molded, we then will uh, braze um, our CMC base. And then this package can be you know, sealed hermetically, uh, typically with an iron nickel cobalt lid that's nickel and gold plated and then using an 80-20 gold tin preform. 
this is some measurements that, that, that we had a company in San Diego um, take of the flatness of a of one of the packages you saw earlier. Uh, this particular package is, is about six millimeters long and in, in one direction. And um, you know, we, we have a different profilometer in-house to, to, to measure, but this is a pretty neat looking little graphic demonstrating how flat and smooth the package is, the die paddle of, of the package is. Uh, excluding a couple areas at the edge, you know, we're looking at better than a, than a six micron um, flat package with better than a 32 RMS surface finish. This is nothing new. This is a, a phase diagram for gold tin. Um, again, you know, gold tin die attach has been around forever. Um, what's revolutionary about how we do it is how thin we can get that uh, gold tin die attach bond line and also how well we can um, prevent voids from forming underneath the chip. Um, another another benefit of gold tin is that uh, when when we attach the die, um, the reflow temperature for for melting that gold tin and creating that solder joint is is down here, you know, a little bit around around uh, what is it? I forget 220 degrees, something like that. So I probably know probably 320. Um, and then the gold from the the package and from the the bottom of the chip goes into solution in that solder joint and and it raises the, the melting point of that solder joint because it's, it's gold rich. So you have no problem whatsoever uh, after attaching a die using gold tin, uh, coming back and attaching the lid using the same 8020 gold tin preform. And so it's a, it's a very convenient um, material set and process for, for chips that you want um, to, to use in high reliability applications. So here's a here's a picture of, a, of our, our our die attach machine. Um, it's fully automated. Um, this is the heating stage that, that came with it, and we're not using a vacuum. We're using mechanical agitation for 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 scrubbing the uh, you know the chip uh, once the preform has been placed underneath it. Underneath it. And um, you know these are, this is a very accurate fully automated piece of equipment that can place multiple co components. This is an example of an MCM that we did for a customer on the East Coast, where the the the, ga the, the FET the GAN FET was attached using gold tin detected dye you know dye attached material, um, and then using conductor epoxy, all these other components were placed, and then we wire bonded. So this is a this is a photo of a, of a chip that was attached to one of our gold plated you know nickel gold plated CMC bases. And uh, we've, we've obscured the, the circuitry on the die, but you can see the RF input and output here. And over here, we, we have the results of an X-ray, and you can kind of see some of the circuitry there. But um, also, there's there's some very tiny bubbles, and there's a lot of them. And um, you know, if not familiar with the the gold tin process, you might think there's a lot of voiding there. But but in reality, um, this is this is spectacular in how little voiding there is. You know, I think the military standard is, you know, you need to have uh, better than 50% coverage and no one void that's larger than, I think, you know, 10 or 50% of the uh, the surface area. And, um, you know, we, we have visual proof here that there's very little voiding, um, but we don't have the method of, of calculating how much coverage there, is, coverage there is. So we have a customer who had this, you know, some slick software that could calculate the coverage. And this is a different chip where they calculated that we had better than 96% coverage with these wide areas being the voids. And interestingly, you know, most of these voids are where the vias are coming through the bottom of the chip and you don't have perfectly flat surfaces. So, and this, is, this, is, this, this type of coverage has been, for, has been confirmed over hundreds of parts that we had x-rayed for certain projects where that was a requirement. These are cross sections of that earlier uh, chip on on tab or chip on base um, assembly that I showed you. Um, this is a cross section towards the middle of the of the package, um, beginning from the, the bottom. The light gray is, is the base um, of the of the package, probably the copper layer, and then we have um, the the gold tin uh, bond line between the chip, which is the slightly darker gray, and then we have the chip metalization on top. And then the, the dark, darkest material is, is just basically the area above the or space above the die. 
So this is, this is what a cross section taken more toward the middle. And here's, here's the cross section taken during turn, you know, at close to the edge where we have a, um, you know, we can see the fillet out here uh, where the, the, the gold tin has, has, um, has wetted to both the, the base and to the end of the metallization underneath the chip. So I think I mentioned earlier that you know, we, we routinely get a, a five to six uh, a micron thick bond line. Um, so this, this slide here is, is showing that I'm a liar. Um, it, it's actually measuring around 13 microns in this case. So um, we happen to get lucky and, and go through, uh, had a cross section go through one of our voids. And um, so what we're looking at here, here's, here's the void in the bond line. You know, here's, here's the, the chip and here's the base of the package. And uh, ex ex you know, exploding that and, and rotate 90 degrees, um, you know, we have a bond line that you, know, you, may, you may interpret as being 17.2 microns wide. But really what you're looking at here is, you know, on, on the chip side, this is the remaining metallization on the bottom of the chip. On the package side, this is the uh, layer, you know, nickel layer. And so your bond line, which is your gold tin, gold, gold tin joint with the uh, gold from the bottom of the package and uh, from the package and the bottom of the chip, is actually something like around five or six microns here. So uh, that's that's where we, we get the um, you know that's that's where we get the proof that we can um, attach using gold tin um, chips uh, with bond lines in the, like a six micron um, you know thick region. And then the advantage here is that you know I mean, gold tin is pretty good thermally, but basically you want to get the heat out of that chip down into that copper you know, portion of the of the, the base as soon as you, you can to, to keep things keep that device as cool as possible. And um, so, yeah, the benefit for these you know, high-performance, high-power GAN devices is that we get uh, a bond line that's, um, that's, that's relatively, relatively void-free, um, and that bond line is, is only about uh, six micron thick. Um, we've had customers, you know, comparing um, uh, their die mounted, you know, using this technique to one of our packages versus uh, the die mounted using silver-filled epoxies onto you know, traditional package uh, base materials where the, they got better than a 20, 20 degree C drop in the junction temperature versus, um, again, versus, versus you know, standard assembly and, and packages. So, you know, keeping the cool that, keeping the die that much cooler improves reliability of the device, which is gonna uh, you know, lengthen the service life of the chip. Um, and also, you know, you can, you can increase the power output and um, with that cooler temperature, you're going to have an increase, increase, you're going to increase the efficiency of the, of the chip. So, you know, this technique for building these packages um, and, and the scrubbing technique for attaching the devices using gold tin die attach um, have a, a very tangible benefit uh, for those of you who are needing to package GAN devices. You know, so, so in summary, um, you know, to, to really give our customers uh, a way to maximize the benefit of GAN technology, we've developed these special packages that we call our LL series, um, as well as our, gold tin, our automated gold tin assembly technique um, that, that give the uh, environment for that GAN to, to, to operate um, in, in the best conditions that it can. And, and we did this by de you know, developing these packages with extremely flat tie attached surfaces and developing this um, gold tin tech die attach method uh, using mechanical agitation and, and, and heat to uh, minimize the thickness of that bond line. So combined, you know, the, the package and the technique, the assembly technique, uh, the chip temperature is reduced and improves the efficiency and the device reliability. So I, I thank you for your attention. Um, if, you, if you go to our website, mentioned there at www.stratedge.com. Um, you, can, you, can, you can take a look at uh, you know, our, you know, some of the packages that are, that are open tooled and available. Um, and um, also you can review the assembly um, services that we provide and see if there's a fit for you. I thank you for your attention. Have a good day.